Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 36 of the Yay for Business podcast. We're really getting up there, aren't we? Uh, Today's episode, really exciting, is with someone I have been uh, following and uh, just loving their work for basically a decade. Um, I had an excellent chat I'm about to share with you with Denise Duffield Thomas uh, about ADHD. And I love this because this is Denise's very first podcast interview, the first time she's really talking about ADHD. It's something that was so fun to dive in on. Um, and what I want to share with you just a little bit before I share the interview is that, you know, Denise is one of those entrepreneurs I've been following for so long because I really resonated with her style, just her laid back, chillpreneur, as the name of her book goes, style. And if you don't know, Denise uh, runs a business. Um, she's a money mindset coach and mentor. She runs a uh, multi seven figure business and has one core offer called Money Boot Camp. She has so many excellent books I've read. I think all of them. She has a book called uh, Lucky Bitch, which is all about manifesting. Then her next book, which is my favorite, is called Get Rich Lucky Bitch, which is all about money manifesting. Absolute must read. I shared about that book on our Money Mindset episode a few episodes back. Um, and then she also has a book called Chillpreneur, which is really about a chill approach to entrepreneurship, which, you know, I am all about. So when I first got the book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch, I was, it was 2012. Um, I was 23 years old and just starting my business. And I devoured this book. Like I had never devoured anything else. Um, I really connected with Denise's writing. I connected with her videos, her approach, her style immediately. And I really couldn't put my finger on why until this ADHD stuff came up. And now I realize this whole time that she's been this example of someone just unapologetically um, embracing who she is. And she didn't know that she had ADHD either. And we'll talk about that in the episode. Um, and having a really successful business without um, being the typical like hustlepreneur. And I really love that. And so I'm so excited to share with you everything we talked about today. We talked about, you know, Denise's journey of discovering that she has ADHD, um, you know, the thing, the tool, things she does, the, the things she's noticed in her life that have come come up, um, the sort of strategies she uses. Um, and we just, we had so much fun chatting about this. One final note before I I let you listen to the episode is a couple times Denise refers to the group. Um, and what she's referring to is I created a Facebook group just for entrepreneurs like us who have or think they might have ADHD and want to talk about um, what works for us and what doesn't work for us in the realm of being an entrepreneur with ADHD that I call rebel productivity. So um, if you want to join us, we'll put the link to that Facebook group and you're more than welcome to come. It's it's really a collaborative group. It's not it's not a group for um you know selling a program or anything like that. It's not a place for us to like give each other advice and I'm not putting myself on a mountaintop as an expert. It's really just a place um to connect with people, ask questions and and um and feel uh <laughs> feel like oh my god, I'm not alone. Like there's other people like me. It's my favorite place to hang out on the internet now because um I love we ask questions around like what works for you with to-do lists? What works for you with planning your week? And there's never the typical advice. It's never like, oh, well, on Sunday, spend three hours like organizing your cat. Like it's, ne- it's not we ask about to-do lists. Nobody has a regular to-do list. <laughs> like So if you feel like this resonates with you and this interview res- resonates with you, I would love to have you join the group and chat more with us about that. All right. Without further ado, here's the interview. Okay, Denise, I am so excited to have this conversation with you today. I feel like I've been, I've done a couple of solo episodes talking about ADHD and all of that. They've been some of the most popular episodes. They've been the episodes that I'm getting the most like genuine heartfelt feedback about, but it's always just been me talking to myself or talking to my microphone. And to have you on today to talk about this journey, I think is 
is going to really enrich in this. So thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Uh, no, I want to say thank you to you because I'm, st- I'm still new in the diagnosis, but hearing you talk about it has been very validating too. And yeah, this is probably the first interview where I've like had a dedicated episode about it. I've started to talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I think it's really cool for us to have this conversation so honestly and openly. Yeah. And I love that because I feel, I feel like for me, when I, when I went on this journey and I'm not, I mean, I'm like maybe like six months like ahead of you, quote unquote on this journey. Yeah. Um, I feel like for, it was the same thing for me. It was like hearing other people talk about it. I was like, Oh my God, that's me. And so I want, I wanted to do that for other people. I knew I read that statistic that entrepreneurs are 300% more likely to have ADHD. And I'm like, well, then I have to tell everyone about this because everyone I know is an entrepreneur. They probably all have ADHD, right? (laughs) Yes. But don't you think that's part of the problem? Because I think I resisted even talking about it because I was like, Oh, everyone thinks this is so popular now. I was like, Oh, I'm just jumping on this popular trend. The oppositional defiant disorder kicked in. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, oh no, it's just it it is just who we are and we're in yeah. the right company for it. But I was yeah. like, oh no, I'm not gonna be like this isn't I don't know, you know when trends come and go in yep. the entrepreneurial world and I was like, no, no, this is actually who we are. It's not like a marketing trend. It's not it's, this isn't yeah, this isn't like a trend to hop on. This is like a brain like thing that you're born with and you will die with. <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear more about your journey then because um, you know, I shared I shared a whole episode about mine and, and I I've listened to lots of people talk about their journeys. And I always, there's always like a lot about hearing other people, especially women's journeys of getting diagnosed or realizing that they have ADHD and I'll resonate with a lot of it. And then there's always the particularities that that are different for me, right? Like maybe some, some folks like did struggle in school or like did have like behavioral problems and some have the hyperactivity and some don't. And so I would actually love to hear about like, how did this come into your awareness? Like what, what was that process? Well, I think for so many mothers, it's come from my kid. So I've been in a process for the last year of different things with my son, who is four and a half. And when they started getting us to fill in all the checklists, I was like, oh, this sounds very familiar. And I think that's a very um, common path that I'm seeing at the moment where moms are like, oh, I probably have this too. And then I was looking at my mom and going, you have this too. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So for me growing up, like it's so obvious now in hindsight, but it got missed so many times because actually a lot of my family like have different issues. And so my cousin um, had quite severe behavioral problems growing up. And so of course, no one would look at the two of us and go, oh, wow, well, there's Denise out like over there reading in the corner for 12 hours a day. So she's fine. Yeah. Whereas Jackson, my cousin, who's like, he's such a great adult, but like, he was throwing tantrums, like he was, um, had massive behavioral problems. And so it was like, well, he's got the, he's got the issue and yeah. she doesn't. And then same with like my brothers, my brothers had like learning difficulties growing up. And then one of my other cousins had OCD. And so I was no, no trouble, Yeah, you know, right, but exactly. I was exactly the way that I, um, hyper-focus was reading. And so I would read a book literally like 10, 12, 14 hours a day And I would read walking to school. I would read in the classroom. And then if the teacher like was like, Denise, you've got to put your book away. I would hide it on my (laughs) lap or I'd hide it behind a textbook. And then if they were finally like, no, no, you do need to take it away. I would like close the book and I'd be looking at them going, this is on you now. Yeah. And then I would be really disruptive. I'd be chatty. I would be like tap dancing around the room. I'd be disrupting everyone. So that was probably one of the first clues. But then the other thing that happened is I developed trichotillomania. So uh, that's uh, pulling hair. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah. And so I would twist and pull my hair quite a lot. And my mom took me to see the doctor about it. And he he did a referral to a, a child psychologist around it. And that shut my mom down completely because my mom was a single mom. She was on welfare and she was always really concerned about getting the attention of people in authority. Mm. And I think she felt like if she acknowledged this problem that I had, then that would be acknowledging that she had done something to cause it. Um, so then that was kind of the second clue is that I had this kind of, the anxiety had to go somewhere and because yeah. I was quite good at, you know, behaving, it manifested in this, in this way. And then, um, 
the losing things. So I would lose my bus pass two or three times a week. And then as I got a little bit older and I had a key, I would lose my key. And so I would have to sit outside the house waiting for my mom to come home or my brother. But then that continued on into my 20s and 30s where it would be like my flatmates in Sydney, my flatmates in London, and then with Mark. And so I actually forgot that was a problem because I've had electronic keypads on all of my houses for 10 years. So I haven't I haven't carried keys for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have even thought that that was a problem. But every every year or so, I would go to the doctor and I would say, I think there's something wrong with me. And they would go down different paths every time. So I remember going, well, let's get you some MRIs because maybe you have a like, I don't know, some sort of issue there. And then, oh, well, let's let's change your birth control. So if someone had just said, do you lose your keys? I would have been like, oh my God, yes. Yes. Um, So I followed all of these different paths. And even last year, um, I had all this anxiety and I was like, it's COVID. Everyone has anxiety. Oh, like 40, like I'm over 40 now. It's probably perimenopause. And again, it's just like, I've been following these, you know, Holes. I think there's always an explanation, right? There's always, yeah, and until there's not, or until like, I love, I love kind of like for you with like having your son going through this process and you checking through that. So interesting is like my brother and I both have it, and you would think we were the opposite. You were talking about your cousin, but it turns out we're the same. And because he, I have hyperactive and I don't think he does. And also he's had concussions a lot and apparently concussions and ADHD are like very intimately linked in the brain. And he went on medication and became a different person. We thought he was depressed his whole life. The only reason we found out about ADHD is because I had a breaking point. Like I had a point and the COVID thing is so interesting. You bring that up because the COVID I'm like, almost like Thank you to COVID in this yes. way because it put me enough in enough of a pressure cooker that I couldn't I couldn't like escapism myself out of it and yeah, no more trips no more conferences no. yeah and I just was like I was at a point where I was like I have no one else I can blame I've realized I've been blaming other people there's always something right and then I was like no like there's and I, I remember calling my mom. And I was like, there's something wrong with me. And I said, I'm not saying this because I have a lack of self-confidence or self-esteem. It's not that. I'm like, I'm genuinely, there's something wrong with me. And, and then she was the one because of the process she'd been going through with my brother, she had a friend say something about maybe it's ADHD. So she happened to just say that to me. And I was like, no, it's not that. But then I went and took a little questionnaire and I bawled because I was like, isn't this just a personality thing? Like, yeah, this is my entire personality. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think COVID, as you said, like we we didn't have our usual crutches. You know, like if you're someone who, oh, well, I'll just I'll just move city. I'll yeah. just go to a conference. I'll just do all these things to distract myself. And then we were just sitting there like with ourselves and our yeah. brains and a bunch of new stress. So it's even worse and you can't get away from it. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're, you know, this journey is so interesting. I'd be curious to see, I know you've already mentioned a couple of these things, but one of the biggest things for me was and it's still happening. I just had a huge revelation last night when I was when I was going to bed that I like yammered on to my husband about for like 30 minutes. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but do you have these moments where you sort of remember things from your childhood and then you see you now see them in a whole different way or or like, I don't know, have more compassion for yourself or go, oh, that's why I did that, or like anything yeah. like that? Well, realizing that at school it was um, like a controlled environment. You know, I went to the same place every day and it was, you know, like I could navigate within that world. My transition to university was an absolute disaster. Mm. And I I internalized that. I was just like, well, I was the first person to go to university. So it felt like a really big deal and there was a lot of pressure. And so I was like, well, obviously I'm just not meant to be here. or I'm not smart enough to be here or all of these other kids, you know, know how these systems work and I don't. And um, so one example was that class timetables and exam timetables were printed out back then. So I went to Mm -hmm. uni in uh, 1998 and they they would be in one spot. And so you couldn't look it up on your phone on the way to the exam. And I was always leaving at the last minute. So I would really struggle to like get to exams on time and things like that. And I remember the first semester when I changed universities and I called up my professor and said, oh, look, um, 
I work full time and I haven't been able to come to your office where there's the only place that the timetable is printed. I was like, could you just tell me, um, you know, semester starts this week when our first class is? And she's like, well, you're going to have to come and look on my door. And I was, I, I work full time. I, I can't. Well, that's not my problem. Can you just tell me when the first class is? No, I can't. You're going to have to come to my office. And I said, well, this is an accessibility issue. And she's like, yeah. well, are you in a wheelchair? And I went, no, I'm not in a wheelchair, but like, what if other people are and they can't make it, you know, or people have got caring responsibilities or, yeah. and so I didn't consider myself as someone who had a you know, disability and I still really don't, but I was like, there's so many things now that technology is taken care of Yeah, that I, that I think that, you know, my generation, people who are my age and older, you know, so much of it's paperwork and accessibility and finding things and yeah. Now, I, I think I'd forgotten because I'm like, well, I've got a successful business. You know, I can make most things work um, yeah. because I live by my phone. I don't have to remember my wallet because it's in my phone. I don't have to remember my keys. You can search your email for an email that you can't find. You know, you can use keywords Absolutely. for finding and Yeah. It's all there. And so I think it's just now just having that appreciation. But the realization I had this month was I was saying to myself, well, it doesn't matter if you don't get diagnosed because all of these things, like you're not late to things and you can find things because I'd put all these layers in. Mm -hmm. But I was like, but at the end of the day, my brain still makes me feel like shit. And so that's important (laughs) just because I'm not inconveniencing everyone in, in like in my world and I'm getting things done and I'm successful. I'm making money. It's still my body and brain still feel horrible sometimes. And that's worthy of taken care of. Oh, definitely. And I think I remember experiencing this. I have, I know probably five people have been diagnosed in my close circle since I did. They're like, oh, then I, so we've talked about it a lot. And this feeling of like, well, then I had a good day. And then I questioned, do I have this? Like, that's part of it. That's part of the whole, it's like, it's, it's, you must gaslight yourself about having ADHD because there are good days or like there are times where you get into a groove and like you can really get things done or in your case where you've just naturally set up your life and your business in a way that it works for those. Like my, my mom also has ADHD and didn't, but also found out through all this, like both my brothers, my mom, my dad, like everybody in my family, my mom had a really successful career. And now she looks back and she goes, Oh, that's why I would organize things that way. Or that's how I would, I would manage a team that way. And they would all like, kind of look at me like I was crazy, but I just thought they were crazy. Right. But now she understands that she just kind of naturally built a life that she could function in. And now she can look back and understand why she built things that way. I, one of the things I wanted to to I talk to you about because I was having these realizations even about some of your work is I know like you always use the color blue and like your whole wardrobe was blue. And I'm wondering if things like that were almost like a simplicity way of like having an ADHD brain. Yeah, well, I think it is because I I love not having to think about stuff right? like that for sure. But I think there's more things like, say, for example, my business, the way that I do my social media, for example. Yeah. You know, I've been talking about batching and scheduling for a long time and people would go, well, that's really disingenuous. Like, shouldn't you share things in the moment? And I only just thought about it this week and I thought, if I shared things in the moment, I would put 20 things on Instagram and then you wouldn't hear from me for three weeks. Yeah. Like, that's how it would work. And so I save like... I save people from that by now, again, tools where you can schedule and batch your social media. So I'll now everyone does it that way anyway. So exactly. But that's totally like a different realization for me going, Oh my God, my book chillpreneur is an ADHD manual for people like ADHD business manual. I actually had that note. I was like, (laughs) my my note says chillpreneur is major ADHD vibes. (laughs) (laughs) But I didn't know that. I didn't didn't realize when I was writing it and I, it's just who you, know. you are. It's how you see the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, how would you know that, right? Exactly. But that's that's one of those things where um, we are distractible. And so if I'm procrastinating on writing my book, I procrastinate by creating social media content. So I'm like months in advance with that. But like I could procrastinate by buying a domain name and starting a completely new business. So I've just redirected my distraction to something that benefits me 
in the long run. And sometimes yeah. that just takes a really gentle, like, oh, cool, you can procrastinate, but just procrastinate in Canva and, and your yeah. scheduling system. That's cool. And yeah. then everything flows from there. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll say like, I was very judgy about ADHD because I've got some friends who are incredibly like dysfunctional in, in their life and it creates massive problems. Like I've got a friend who's this incredibly creative person and she loses her passport like every single month. (laughs) And, and so I was really judgy or I would go for dinner with her. She'd lose her card every, like every week. And so I'd have dinner with her and she'd go, you're going to have to pay because I lost my card. And for a long time, I was just like, God, she's so flaky and it's so annoying. And now I've got so much more compassion for her because I'm like, wow, that must be really hard to live like that. And I'm so glad now that you can put your, you know, your cards on your phone. And so I bet that doesn't happen as much anymore. But I was just like, oh, she's so flaky. And my mom, I mentioned this to her recently. I was like, mom, I think you might have ADHD too. And she was so offended because there's still this stigma around it. And she was like, I can't believe you would think that way. And I was like, mom, we moved house every six months. Like, you know, you, you live in an RV now because like you don't want to be in the same place. So she'll come to our house. She'll go, I'm staying for two weeks. And within three days, she's like, well, I've been invited to go on a three day cruise with a, um, like Elvis impersonator. Cool. Mom, you go do that. But she has a massive stigma around it too. And even me sharing it with her, people are like, Oh, no, no, that's okay. No, you don't like you're, you're really successful. You're really normal. And I'm like, I don't think this is bad. I'm thrilled. Like I've been chasing something like a diagnosis of something for 20 years. You know how many blood tests I've had? Do you know how many like, you know, different therapies I've tried? Like, Thank God it's not something more severe and like life threatening. You know, this is, this can be handled. This is, I remember like what my realization was, I realized that I thought I had, I was thought I had 99 problems, but it turns out I just, they're all the same thing. It's just one problem. Yeah. So now I don't have, feel like I have to like whack-a-mole all these different, like I'd solve one problem and a different thing would pop up. Now I can have a lot more of like a holistic, self-compassion for the whole situation. And yep. I, that's been really key for me is um one thing I really admire about you, at least like from what I see is that you're so unapologetic about the things that work for you. And just like, that's what I do because that's like what has to happen. And I realized that, you know, you mentioned earlier about how like you were this way as a kid. And then that went on to your twenties and thirties, et cetera. And for me, it was when I turned 30 a few years ago, I was like, oh, now I'm going to get it together. Like, it's not cute anymore that I do this. So now now I'm going to be a serious adult. And it was the fact that that didn't work that really, I think, pushed me over the edge. But I spent a couple of years, the first couple of years of my 30s, like trying to make myself a tidy, organized person and then just berating myself for not being able to do it. I have a really good friend, she'll probably listen to this episode, who is the most organized, tidy like she's the party planner. She's the reason our friend group is a group because we would never see each other if she didn't organize everything. Sometimes when I'm around her, I feel like a hot mess. And I don't think she would want me to feel that way, but I was judging myself. I was comparing myself. And so I really admire that you, you have, you have been an example of like you mentioned in our, we were messaging back and forth about this interview and you were saying about how, you know, you don't do things inside, but behind paywalls, cause it's just easier to have a black and white rule. And I was like, I love that. Like, I love that. It, it's just easier sometimes to be like, I don't do that. And that's Oh it. yeah. Yeah. So what, we, what um, Courtney is referring to there, she said, um, can you come and do a training in my program? Yeah. And um, I always like when it's someone I know, I think, oh yeah, I'll make an exception for you. And then I, I remembered what my rule is around it. And I, I said, I forgot hey, my rule. And then I remembered my, <laughs> exactly. I was like, Oh, this is the reason why I don't do it. Not because, you know, like for any particular reason, a m- many reasons. Right. Yeah. So I always like, I'll go on anyone's podcast because I can show up. I don't have to prepare. And like the stakes are pretty low, but when I'm in someone's paid program, the problem I've had in the past is I haven't read the contract. Yeah. I haven't read the terms. I've agreed to something. And then I go, oh crap, what did I agree to? And then what I realized too is that 
entrepreneurs don't have these discussions around, okay, well, who owns this IP now exactly. and how long am I going to yeah. use it for? And am I now part of your sales page? Is my face going to be part of your marketing? Mm -hmm. What if you do something really bad and then I have to email you and say, hey, you have to take down my, my and stuff. And this is like a whole thing you have to deal with. Like, it's a whole thing. And, and, and so I can't be bothered know. doing the research. Yeah. No, and <laughs> I love know. that. And it's not yeah. like, oh, it's not like, oh, I don't, it's not about you or your, it's nobody's program. It's nobody's like, I have a, I have a, my voicemail says, I don't listen to voicemail. So either email me at this address or text me. And it's really funny because people still leave me voicemails and I'm like, well, you didn't listen, <laughs> but it's like, it's not not that I don't want to listen to your voicemail. It's that I, if I have to then nuance whose voice, then I have to go into the whole, then I have to listen to all the voicemail, right? Like, so exactly. it's just easier sometimes to create these constraints on what you do and what you don't do just because the, the brain energy is so much. It's so taxing. It's to save, exactly. It's to save ourselves. And I do the same thing with summits too, because yeah. I started going, well, I'm going to have to see who else is speaking on the summit and, you know, all of these things. And I just realized, oh, you know what? Like I don't have energy for it. I don't have availability for it. And so that's a blanket. No. Yeah. And even like I have to batch all my interviews. So normally I wouldn't do an interview today because today's the day I go to the cinema with my friend, but I could fit it in just before. <laughs> and I really wanted to have this conversation. But it's again, so with, if you have clients who have ADHD, as in if you have clients who are entrepreneurs, yeah. there are so many things you can do. Like I had two people recently that I wanted to hire and I emailed them, oh, yeah, cool, I want to hire you. And they're like, great, when are you available? And I'm like, oh, far out. No, have mm -hmm. an online calendar because yeah. now I have got to go from your email to my calendar to an online country time converter I've forgotten about your email yep I've completely forgotten about it and I've gone and researched like yesterday I was trying to do it and I ended up researching whether my great-grandfather was a Nazi for an hour <laughs> because I all I did was flick over to try and look at my calendar yeah and then this thought came in and I literally researched it for like an hour yeah. Um, and so I'm like, you can't do things like that now because most entrepreneurs probably have this problem. Yeah. And it will start, it will stop them. You know, like yeah. if I have to go get my credit card from another room, I've forgotten about your service. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which is why my trick for not overspending is not saving my credit card on certain devices because I know I will not buy anything. <laughs> it's too easy. The, oh, like, okay. I'm having I've to get off the card. Exactly. I've got a question for you, right? Okay. So my impulse spending got crazy last year in COVID. Tell me some of the things that you bought in COVID last year. So here's what's really funny. Okay. I don't, re okay. That's a great question, but I'm like, I, first of all, I feel like I don't remember. I'll have to, I need to, I'm like looking around my room. Like, what did I buy? I feel like I got really good because I hate shopping in person already. So I didn't want to go out and I don't like online shopping for clothes. So I wasn't doing that. Um, and then travel is my biggest impulse buy. So there were so many times that airline tickets were really low, but the angel on my shoulder was like, no, Courtney, it's a pandemic. You're not. And I physically, I'm in Canada and all my family is in the US. So I, I physically can't go see my family. It's the border's been closed. So that has really constrained me on, I'm worried about when it reopens and I'm like travel, travel. Cause I, I will be releasing the Kraken. Like it will be, <laughs> it's going to be tough. So I'm trying to think, I'll, I would love to hear some of yours and maybe that will help me. <laughs> well, I, I, another friend of mine who also has the ADHD, we kept on sharing all these things together. Cause we're like, Oh wow, we're on zoom calls even more than normal. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to find like the perfect hair topper. Mm -hmm. because we my root my because I'm not a natural blonde my roots were like four or five inches by then and so we we're trying to find these wig toppers which is just like it's like a half yeah. wig but we would buy them and they would turn up and there would be these plastic crappy Terrible. Barbie doll things and um so we had bought heaps of those and like hair scrunchies and like magnetic lashes and all these things to like have really quick zoom calls so they were arriving like every day I'd be like what did I order <laughs> but one of the things I did this was so funny um I was supposed to speak in Iceland last year and I thought yeah. you know what would be really fun would be to play the ukulele on stage and I wanted to learn billionaire and 
I was like, this, this would be is so the cool. the most ADHD thing already. <laughs> yeah. You know what would be really fun is to learn a whole new instrument for a very specific moment. <laughs> yes. So I was like, this would be so cool. And I'll sing billionaire on stage. It would be really great. So I hired this um, ukulele coach on Zoom and I bought a ukulele. Oh my God. You like really took action on this. Right? I did, right? But the problem was, and she's got the it, ukulele out just for I've everyone. Got the, I've got the ukulele. The, this was the major problem. Every lesson, we would go through it and I'd go, oh, this is cool. And I could play the song by the mm. end of the, the Zoom call. And then I would forget. Yeah. So every lesson, I'd be like, can you show me G again? Yeah. And like this ukuleles are that like there's pretty much only like three chords you'd need to learn. But I would forget every single time. And then I realized, I was like, oh, it's not so easy. You have to um, like tune the ukulele every time you play it pretty much too. And so I was going, oh my God, I'll, I'll have to take this ukulele to Iceland. I'll have to try and tune it like on stage while everyone's looking. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to forget like the first chord I'm going to have to call my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, I can put that aside. That ukulele is really like, beautiful cute. though. I mean, it's so cute and it looks yeah. cute in my office, but there you go. yeah, that's, yeah, I know. I, so, so yeah, I that was, that, is, that does remind me of something. So when I was in high school, I played the flute and I, one thing I thought would be fun was to rent a flute and practice it. So I did the musical instrument thing and I went and I rented a flute and I was proud of myself for getting that far because usually it's like, Ooh, it'd be cool to do that. And then I'm like, oh, I have to drive to the, like the music store and then like talk to somebody and then figure out how much it costs. I'm just like, no, that's way too much. Let's, let's go to the bar instead. Like This is way too much work. So I actually did. I got the flute and I, I'll say maybe for a couple of weeks, I played it a few times, but then there was, I would say six months that it was sitting on a shelf and I was paying for it monthly. And I kept going, oh yeah, I should do that. Um, I also, um, I bought an iPad I bought, oh, this is what I bought, Denise. Okay, now I remember. I bought an iPad, a MacBook, and an iMac. <laughs> so I bought out the <laughs> Apple store. And I wanted to learn how to draw and procreate on my iPad. I wanted to create like really cool art. And I started watching this awesome, um, this awesome, I forget her name, but her YouTube channel channel is called Bardot Brush. And her stuff is so colorful and beautiful. And I loved it. And I did a couple of tutorials and I did some stuff, but it's like, I just can't maintain it. It's just then it's, and I, here's, here's what's happened. Here's back to, to the ADHD point is I, I did work with an ADHD coach specifically for a few months because I wanted just, I wanted some very specific support on that from someone who has ADHD and is an expert at it. And I think my biggest takeaway from that was me learning to accept that if I I start something right now, I love doing it. It's not going to last. Like other than like my marriage, <laughs> like and that's okay. There, and that's okay. And so you yeah. know, I got in a really good gym routine and he said, look, this isn't going to last. And I was a little mad at the time because I, for some reason, I, even though this keeps happening to me, that I have this new routine, I have this new scheduling method. I have this new way of organizing and it never lasts. I just couldn't get myself to the point of accepting that when I start a new strategy, it's not going to last. And since I've done that, I, I, I feel okay with it. I don't, I don't yeah. believe myself for not doing and it. And so maybe the lesson then is to go, you know what? It's okay to go like to the library and do their like random thing and do their random Basket thing, but class and- <laughs> not buy your own ukulele or, <laughs> or this is what I did last year. I signed up to a lot of subscription things and then yes. canceling them is really, really hard. Yes. So it's like, maybe it's the, it's cool. I'll, I'll come to your class to do that thing. Yeah. Why not? And you just leave it there. Yep. Like I'll leave all your things. I don't need to buy a kiln now or like a pottery throwing wheel. The the canceling things is huge because I, this is the reason I don't like buying clothes online is because inevitably they don't fit and I miss the return date and then I own them forever. Exactly. So one thing I did for that, and I don't think I have it here at the moment, I um, got a tape measure and put it in my desk drawer because then it was really easy just to go, oh, you know, That's my size. So, yeah, sizing's yeah. so different. Okay, so here's my whole game changer, and it's very privileged, and it requires money. But I have a daily housekeeper now. Yeah. But I've I've worked my way up to it from 
uh, I'm so glad you're getting to this because I was going to, I wanted to talk, I wanted to talk exactly about this. I wanted to talk about the outsourcing, but like the incremental upgrades. Exactly. Yeah. So we started with a biweekly cleaner and, you know, and having a cleaner and please pay your cleaners well and above market and and be fair and nice and all that kind of stuff. Um, Yes. And sometimes it's just like, someone was like, oh, it's so gross to, you know, have people clean, clean your toilet. And I'm like, if you put a toilet brush next to your toilet and teach everybody after they've like poop to brush mm-hmm. it, that's cool. It's not as, it's not as gross. Um, let's just be clear on that. Right. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, oh, well let's have a cleaner every week. And then it was like, Hey, when you're cleaning, can you do an extra hour and change the sheets and change the towels and do some laundry as well? And then it progressed. We decided to get someone to come every day. And this was the game changer. And a lot of people think, oh my God, it's going to be so crazy expensive. If you're an entrepreneur, most people have like a desire to, you know, earn decent money from their business. And so I believe that hiring someone in your house for someone with ADHD is way more valuable than outsourcing some business tasks. I still do all my own social media. And that's because I like it, but like my housekeeper was away over Christmas, of course, paid, paid time off. And I went, I should do some laundry. The amount of energy I was expending on that laundry, because I can't just put it in the laundry. I was like, oh, we need a, we need a system here. People have been neglecting the system. We should. And then I was like, hang on. We should get new baskets. We should organize the laundry differently. We exactly. should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, it's Christmas. We've got all this red stuff. I should do a separate red load instead of like doing the red with the blacks. And then well, I was I trying Google to this. Pack. What's the best way to wash this? I did. Wash? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, she's like the housekeeper. She's put the laundry detergent in totally the wrong spot. Like, I think we should put it here, here and here. And then I was like hanging things out and I was going, well, I'll put the light things and then heavy things. So I was like staggering them. And then I was going, when they were all dried, I was like, should I fold things off the line <laughs> or should I just put it all in a basket and then go and sit somewhere and do it? And so I I was like, this is why I don't do it. Not because I'm too fancy and too good and too privileged to do it. It's just that my energy gets so taken up by those things. Yeah. And like during COVID, you can't I was just do going, the monotonous task. You can't just be no. like, I'm doing me either. And it, it's like, it, is a hu- it becomes a huge thing. It just, it it's has a huge to be a thing. huge thing. And then I lost sleep over it because I was yeah. going, I was going, oh my God, when, when Candace comes back from holidays, I'm going to have to have this conversation with her because I don't think she's doing it in an optimal way. <laughs> and I was like, but it's done. It's done. And I don't have to think about it. And so we probably spend um, about 600 a week on having a housekeeper. Yeah. Which sounds like a lot, right? But if you are in a service-based business, that might be one client. Mm -hmm. One client will be dedicated for that. And so I've just... um, I love the way you think about that is like, no, I love that kind of math. One client is going to that and then think about all that time and that's, we're talking, we're talking an everyday situation here. That's every right? day. So she comes at seven and she leaves at like sometimes 1130, sometimes one yeah. o'clock. And part of that is that she does all the laundry. She does all the cooking. So she decides what gets cooked. She cooks mm-hmm. it. She cleans up the stuff and then we heat it up at night. So there's no, and it, cause she was like, well, what do you guys want to eat? And I was like, don't, don't that's uh, the problem. <laughs> I don't know. And so I don't care. I really don't care. And then she does like, she goes to the post office, you know, those slips that come and say, you've got a parcel. She does that. She does return. There you go. Um, She does like all the just little tasky things that never get done of like, oh, that light bulb's out. Mm -hmm. Um, She'll go and get the light bulb. And so, and one thing I'm going to ask her to do, which I keep on forgetting to do is, can you take my package of vitamins that I bought from a vitamin subscription company and can you put it? next to my breakfast in the morning because otherwise I don't remember to have it. So, and she does light cleaning. Um, but we have, we still have the deep cleaner that comes every like two weeks to do all the big stuff, but she'll, she'll like change our sheets and change our towels and, Oh, you guys are out of toothpaste. I'll get, so I just don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. And you know what, like my business, because of my hyper-focus on my business, I can employ so many people because of that, you know, 
And because you're leveraging your strength as a yeah. strength instead of focusing on the like the the ADHD is like it's a sword and there's two sides to it. There's the strength and the weakness. And if you if you focus on trying to fix all the weaknesses, you'll lose the strength. When I was trying to be a tidy person, I this was the aha I had was in trying to be a tidy person, I was losing my magic because part of my magic was I would make lunch, make a mess, have an idea and go start implementing it. But if I tidied up lunch, I lost the idea. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why I see in the group, people are like, what's the best system for doing my laundry? And I'm like, outsourcing. Yeah. Because yeah. it will, in the long run, yes, it's going to cost you money, but it's, it is costing you yeah. money because you're not going to be able to finish anything that actually makes you money. Yeah. And so it is worth it. And um, we were talking about that little light box that I got for Mark, right? Yeah. So for right. Christmas, I bought this light box and I pre-filled it in with the letters and it says sell more boot camps because every time we go, oh, maybe we should do this. We go, no, no, let's sell more boot camps. And, and that sounds transactional. It's not, I freaking love my people and I'm there for them and all the it's, things. It's more about keeping you focused. On... It's keeping me yeah. focused because otherwise I would start different businesses. I would do all these random things. And even things like getting credit cards and bank loans, anytime in my whole business where I've gone, maybe I should get a credit card so I could join that mastermind. I was like, no, no, no. How many boot camps? Is that mastermind yeah. going to cost me? And I always come back to that and I go, oh, well, that's only like, you know, I wanted to join an $18,000 mastermind. I was about to put it on a credit card because of mm. the impulsivity of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Well, that's, um, that's nine boot camps. So go sell yeah. nine boot camps. Yeah. And then you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I think too, that speaks to the, the simplicity of the business model. And that's something that I will like, I've really taken away from, from, cause I've been, I've been following you and consuming your work for like almost 10 years. So you've influenced me. And I think I remember being, cause I joined boot camp in like 2014. So this is a while ago, but I remember, um, you talking about like all roads lead to boot camp and, and that, like, that was like all I needed to hear to just go, Oh, you can create stuff but it all needs to go ultimately to the one thing. Yeah. And so that, that has helped me so much in creating a container for what I do, because I will say, I think sometimes people with ADHD, cause I work with a lot of entrepreneurs who, who are like, Oh yeah, I have ADHD. So I need to have a lot of different offers. And I'm like, I get that. I think there's so much freedom in what, what you're saying is I like creating stuff. And I think that's awesome. But then you are creating a lot of instability in the business because you constantly have these new things going on and then you forget about them. And then they're not making money. Yeah. I think the the core offer business model, and then channeling your creativity into the marketing and like like different promotions. Yes, you create can do and, at the top of the funnel, not at the bottom of the yeah. funnel. Yeah, and like if I think of all my opt ins I've created over the years, I'm like, oh, a passive income one, a pricing one, a mindset yeah. one, a blah 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 one, a blah 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 one, and they all lead to the same yep. place <laughs> instead of what we all you know, often we do is like create all these different courses and programs and books and things, and they're all unfinished and they all lead to completely diverse places. Yeah. And no, like nobody under, people are so confused about exactly. what you do but because, yeah. Even people who are multi ideas people, and this can work a hundred percent. So what is the umbrella for multi ideas people? It is idea generation. Mm. So if you're someone who starts lots of businesses and all that kind of stuff, consider being an idea consultant for other people. And I actually do hire these people because like, for example, when my um, book Chillpreneur, when I got um, the deal for it with Hay House, they were like, wow. come back to us with three alternate subtitles. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> So I hired someone who is a professional idea generator brainstormer person who is not in my business. I paid for 90 minutes of her time. And this is the key. She doesn't, she's not responsible for anything. We have a shared Google Doc during the call because she doesn't then have to send me a report, send me notes. Idea generated people, you will never do that. Oh, I'm like, this is... And they'll be waiting for six I months, right? Yeah. So we had a shared Google Doc. We typed in, we were like, discuss different names, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of it, we're like, yep, these are the three we're going to present to Hay House. Okay, thanks, bye. 
Mm. And she can just shut down that part of her brain, never think about that thing again and go on with her day. She yeah. doesn't have to make my business her business. Yeah. And so if you're an idea generated person, think of yourself as a doula, as a midwife for other people's businesses. Yep. You are there. You help them deliver the baby. You don't go home with them. You don't have to see them. You're not responsible for their child getting into university. No, you're not. But so many people feel bad because they don't follow on with their ideas, but they're not meant to. They're meant to be there at the birth of an idea and then let it go. That's valid. And And the key is like, that's valid in and of itself. That's enough. It's super valid. So if you're struggling with all these things, start with selling an hour of your time to help people solve business problems. Yeah. And you might never have to do anything else. You might make a really good living just in selling like 90 minute increments and um, make it 90 minutes and you're, they record it and they do their notes. Yeah. I love and that because you'll and never you follow go. through with sending that recording. You will never, ever, ever, ever do it. And so don't beat yourself up. Just profit from what comes easy to you. Yes. yes. And that is It is ideas and thinking through things and solving problems. But if you wanted to niche that down, if you're in the publishing industry, you can have, well, cool. Are you stuck with a plot point? Like I would hire someone to help me just go, oh, no. Or an entrepreneur who's like, oh, my, how often do you hear entrepreneurs say, I like, I'm running out of ideas for content, you know? Yes. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. You could sit down and go, (laughs) and then they've recorded it. And then you're like, Bye, have fun with implementing all these ideas and run away. So that when I say all roads lead to boot camp, the idea is people think that that doesn't apply to them. Mm -hmm. And it does. Your umbrella is I'm an idea, I'm an idea generator. And there's so many ways that you can, you know, you can be an incubator, you can be a problem solver, you can be a consultant. There's so many ways within that to niche that down. Um, and and understanding that's I, your one thing. I think I think the key for the people who are that that are resisting it too is that we we often we forget that the people who st- we're great at ideas, right? Let's say I'm an idea generator. I'm great at that. The people who need me struggle with that they're good at the stuff I'm not. So it is inherently va- valuable to them to get the ideas because they're probably implementers. Exactly. And so they don't and need help with that. And you're thinking, no, they I don't. need to fix this part of myself that isn't good at that. No, other people are great. There are people who are so good at implementing, but they have nothing to implement. <laughs> exactly. And, but me as well, I can come up with my own ideas, but I'm borrowing someone holding space for container, me for 90 yes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm buying. I'm buying a container. Well, You're it's right. holding you accountable yeah. because it's also like another great like thing with ADHD I've noticed is just the outer accountability of having something scheduled and someone else who is there or, and it's even better if the other person is the person managing that thing on the calendar for me, it's like yeah. it's their calendar and their, and, and so, I mean, I even use my husband in this way because I'll just, I know if I tell him I need to do something, he'll remind me to do it. And then he'll keep nagging me about it. And I've mm-hmm. told our operations manager, cause she's the implementer, right? She, she does not want to be nagged. She doesn't need to be nagged. And I'm like, Allison, my dream is for someone to literally send me a to-do list of what I need to do that day and then poke me about it all day long. I'll be like, oh yeah, I need to do that. It won't bother me. And so for her, that's the opposite of what she would want. For me, that outer accountability, or like you said, hiring someone and having that container, that's so valuable for them. Yes. To like just okay, space. This is the time I'm doing this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because if I sat down to come up with my own subtitles, First, I wouldn't be able to do it for an hour. I yeah. just wouldn't. You'd be and Googling I, if your grandfather was a Nazi, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what I was even like comparing pictures. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, so I, look like I, like, I feel like we need another conversation just about <laughs> this reason. Oh, definitely. But um, so that's really great for people to hear, I think, too, of it's okay to pay someone just to hold space for you of something that you can do yourself. Yeah. Just so it's done. Yep. Um, I even hired someone who was a book accountability coach and the gossamer of accountability was very thin actually, because she didn't need to whip me. We just had a system. She was like, send me a chapter on Friday and I will send you edits by Monday. You have to send me corrections by Tuesday. Then you have to send me another chapter by Friday. Mm -hmm. That is how my last book got written. I love it. Um, Because I just knew, oh, she's waiting for me to send that. And so I would send it at like, you know, sometimes midnight, but it still counted. 
And um, you just need to layer in those little things because you probably won't do it. But before you even get there, what can you just eliminate? Like, can you mm. just not care about that thing mm-hmm. anymore and just and just let it go? That it's like I'm I'm just gonna let that go. Mm-hmm. I'm holding up my ukulele. Yeah, um, that's okay for me to not do that anymore. And then I look at okay, what what sis, what can I systemize? So can I buy a piece of software? like an online calendar system Mm -hmm. that I'll never have to have this conversation again. Yep. Nobody will. And then I look at what can I batch and hire someone for a very short period to like, you know, do a year's worth of content for me instead of hiring them for a year. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I didn't think the short term stuff. Outsourcing. but in a, in like a high touch container kind of way. Exactly. So yeah. that for me, that might be a VIP day or it could be a batch thing. Like, as I said, create a hundred, a hundred of these things. Mm-hmm. Like, so with my podcast, the way I did that was perfect. I hired three half days in a studio. I sat and recorded 28 episodes and then only then did it go to my assistant and I only had to approve the artwork. I had to approve the layout of the podcast page and then she got all 28 episodes transcribed, all 28 episodes are all in. And so we're scheduled now till November. And Mm -hmm. I only had to do three half days in the studio. And then it's not, it's got nothing to do with me. And so we could do that where it's like every week, oh, cool. Have you got the, have you done the graphic? Have you done the thing? (sighs) She's going to do that over um, like two, three weeks. It's super efficient for everybody. Yeah. And then it's done. Yeah. Um, so that's how I think about it with everything is like, how can I do this in the shortest, most intense point of view? Because I will be bored of it otherwise. Oh yeah. If it had to be every week. Um, now I'm recording our episodes kind of every week, but I just have to sit and talk and I'm okay with that. And then I ship it to Valerie and Valerie does yeah. everything. And so I'm okay with that because, but I like the idea of what would work for me. And what you just said was paying for a space. And knowing that I paid for that space, that the intention of that space was to get X number of things done. I would absolutely, that's what would, it's the, the, the money and the investing in the, that, that leverage. And I forgot that I was going there. Right. Cause I was like, Oh, I'll book it for like, you know, Feb or something like that. This was last year. And then I totally forgot. And I saw it in my calendar and I was like, Oh shit, I'm in the podcast studio tomorrow. What am I going to talk about? (laughs) <laughs> and so I did, I did no prep, okay. but what I did was, this is so funny. I went to my website from like 2012 where I was really prolific <laughs> and I went to the Wayback machine and I sat on my laptop and the guy would be like, you ready? And I'd go, yeah, I could talk about that for 20 minutes. Okay. And I was like an old blog post. And I would talk about it for 20 minutes and that's how we did 28 episodes of me oh, just going, I, love that. I can talk about this. <laughs> I love that. Because All the kids who got people need to hear that content. School, yeah. This is what we do now. We're podcasters. Exactly. I did the same thing for a podcast. I taught, I have, I have a whole blog post I did on people pleasing and I did a podcast. I just basically read the blog post and kept adding things to it as I went, you know? So, but this is what we're trying to do. We're always thinking, how can I entertain people in a new, fresh way? And what I realized was that I was creating content for the people who had already bought from me. Mm hmm because I've only got one product. And so I was like, Oh, I'm constantly trying to re entertain my boot campers. Whereas. Someone needs to hear this for the first time. Mm-hmm. And actually, they're the people that I'm creating content for. Mm-hmm. And so I just I just re- re-record the same stuff every like two years because I've got a new nuance to it. I've experienced something different. I've got different stories around it um, or I've been asked heaps of questions about it so it can be a richer, deeper thing. Yeah. And, you know, like I, um, I watch Hamilton like every day. Mm-hmm. I'm not like... I, I get different things out of it each time, but I'm not like, oh, I wish there was a Hamilton too because I'm bored of this now. And that's what we're trying to do. We're like always going, oh, it needs to be fresh and exciting. Yeah. And to be it's fair, when you watch Hamilton every day, it. it is exactly the same. When you're recording a topic based on a blog post, you are adding like it is it is fresh. But even the even the folks like me who were in boot camp forever ago still need to re-hear the same things. And I want to hear the same topic from 2021, Denise, right? Like, I want to know what the what you think about that topic now and like what's changed and what hasn't because I also need to hear that, right? So I think, I think we overestimate how much we have to create new stuff and have like yes. 
brand new and everything all the time. I think because we hyper consume content, we assume everyone else has seen everything that we've done too. Yeah. They're you like know, like over everything we've ever done. Yes. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, my screen time is crazy. Like I spend nine hours a day on my phone. No, not even joking. And so I do, and I read very fast. And so I'm always just like, I'm like this with content all day yeah, long. Just <laughs> shoveling it in. <laughs> yes. And then I realize that there are people who just dip it. Like they're just like, oh, I just like dip in for 10 minutes and like read a blog post. And I'm like, what? How do you live <laughs> like that? So yeah, don't assume that all of our audience has yeah. seen everything yeah. that we've done. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. And this this has been a really great conversation. I think in there too about the content, there's a lot of really good, very practical sort of action steps that people can, even me I'm like oh I kind of want to book a space for the podcast that sounds like a yeah good. I like I need I need to like rent an Airbnb or like I can't because then it's like oh that's what yeah. I'm doing here you know so well that's I'm, what I do for video content yeah is I hire an Airbnb I hire a videographer I hire a photo shoot at the same time I hire hair and makeup and then I just sit there for five days and I do my years of my whole year of content Absolutely love it. Yeah. It's, it's the just, only way to do it. It's done. Yeah. And uh, then it's so done. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. You and thought, well, not that you even did it focus. because you've ADHD. <laughs> and I never watch it again. Yeah. And, you know, people will say, oh, I loved your newsletter today. And I go, I have no idea what you're talking about because I, I might have hyper-focused that content like, yeah. you know, 20 things. And then it's my team who go, wow, that Instagram thing is really going well. So let's turn that into a newsletter for, for everyone. And so I'm like... It was real for me at the time, but I have, it's yeah. not my business anymore. Yeah. What happens. I'm just like, I create with that person in mind and then it's none of my business. When people consume it, how they can consume it, at what time, it was real for me at the time. And it, that you have to believe in the magic of technology to transmute yeah. that to yeah. where it needs to go and who yeah. it needs to go to. It doesn't serve anyone at all staying on your computer or staying in your head. No, or like waiting until it's perfect and redoing it a bunch of times and, and all of that. Exactly. All right. But well, thank you for having me. This was Yay. awesome. I'm so glad we were able to do this. I know you're like going to hunker down and, and uh, be focusing on getting some some things done. So I, I really... No, I'm going to the cinema. Thursday is blocked for me to go to the cinema with love my friend. Love it. Okay. Yeah, I love it. We're going to the fancy cinema and we're having lunch in the fancy cinema. I'm going to take my blankie and I can't wait for this to come out. And you know that no one has to put this on double speed because. No, people, <laughs> people like, can't listen to me on double speed. I'm like, oh, you can watch it on double speed or listen. And they're like, I can't. I, you don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> you sound Thank like a chip. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in the group. Bye. Sounds good. Bye. Yay. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you love today's content and are ready to finally start making a full-time income from your business this year, make sure to get on the wait list for my program, Yay for Clients, over at yayforclients.com and you'll be notified the next time enrollment is open. Or if you're already booked with clients and you want to learn how you can turn your signature service into a signature program, and add 100K of revenue to your bottom line, come apply to my group coaching program, Yay for 100K over at CourtneyShaw.com forward slash apply. Thanks again and have an awesome day.